Hey guys, hope you are all doing incredibly well. It is the 23rd of December today and we are going to do an update on Bitcoin. So just following on from last video, obviously I mentioned that we were following this pitchfork to the upside, which as you can see, we are starting to drop out of it. We're seeing a little bit of weakness here. And so I do want to give my further analysis on this. What does it mean exactly? Does it mean we can expect a big drop from here? Or does it mean that we're just going to see a bit more prolonged sideways price action before we continue our move to the upside as you know my long-term analysis is very much the same so you will see that in a few videos back where i mentioned in the thumbnail you'll see the big 30k in quite a luminous font um, that is still my long-term analysis that is still my long-term target so we'll discuss that in this video we'll explain how i'm looking at this how this to me is significant that we're losing the lower warning line of this pitchfork but i'll talk about the key levels that i'm looking out for in order to time this market correctly so if that sounds interesting then stay tuned Hey guys, so it is good to be with you again during this festive period and um, yeah, first things first, I want to say a massive thank you to all the subscribers, all the people that liked the last video. As I say, this is what I've been looking out for. I want to see you showing your support because that motivates me to produce more material. I've seen fantastic support. It really has been very flattering. Uh, we're still trying to reach that 300 like target. We're just short of it. Got 245 likes as we speak on the last video. So, but I'm really impressed by that. I really am. Let's see if we can hit that 300 like target for Christmas. That's the challenge for today's video. So, yeah, as I say, channel is growing nicely. Still, the YouTube algorithm is start well. It's starting to wake up. I think it is promoting my videos a little bit more now, and hopefully, with your support, that will happen. A little bit more and um, yeah so you can expect more videos from me the way things are going all right so uh, as I mentioned in the last video we will do a raffle at the end of this video where all the comments from the last video will go into the raffle so that you will have an opportunity for uh, will not open an opportunity you will uh, you will have free access to the juice uh, the juice is where I cover a few modules covering all the key indicators that I look at uh, in technical analysis basically so uh, yeah that is what the raffle is all about and obviously anyone who comments in today's video will have an opportunity to enter the raffle for the next video on top of that sorry just before we jump into the technical analysis on Bitcoin I want to do a Christmas offer for you guys yeah I thought you know it's not going to be the same this Christmas uh, here in the UK we can't really visit many relatives, um, especially where I'm located. We can't actually visit anyone. Um, so it's not going to be the same. Obviously, with the new addition to my family, it is still going to be a special Christmas for, for me. But I know for many, it's not going to be the same. And I want to maintain that kind of uh, charitable spirit. So as I say, I want to do this Christmas offer. What we're going to do is going to be a limited offer. So the first three people to sign up with this will have access. And um, yeah, if you are... If you sign up after that, then unfortunately you will not have access. Basically what I'm going to do, it'll be free access for the first month to Cryptology. For those of you that aren't familiar with Cryptology, if we quickly come over to wave618.com where you can find all of my products, Cryptology is right here. Basically, we do a weekly uh, update looking at the top 15 market caps and you get access to the Discord. But on top of that, you also get access to the works, which is this. Yeah. And this is all of my educational material put into one package right here. Basically, whilst you're subscribed, you will have access to that. The modules will be released gradually over the period of three months. OK, so you can click on any of these to find out what they are about um, where you'll find a lot more information. So that is the offer. As I say, it's a first come, first serve basis. And um, yeah, you will find the link to that in the description to this video. All right. Without further ado, let's jump on into the technical analysis. Okay, so as I say, I had been really monitoring this pitchfork. 
We found initial support after this drawback with a three leg down here. We found support at the lower warning line. But now, as you can see, we're losing momentum to the upside. We've gone up in what looks like a corrective three wave move after a three wave move down. And we're not quite reaching the same heights within the pitch walk anymore. We're losing that momentum. And in fact, you could argue that the lower warning line is acting as resistance right now. So I was a little bit concerned about this, but at the same time, it doesn't look like it wants to do a major sell-off the way I'm seeing this. And to be honest, I would want to see, you know, an initial five wave move down to be concerned that we're going to see a major sell-off. And I'm not seeing this. I see this as definitely a three wave move down, three waves up. And so I'm probably expecting another three wave-ish or maybe even a triangle play out to finish off a more complex correction. So basically we're looking at like a W x and then a y to play out now that might actually in fact go on into the next week okay because i can't really see it happening this week because that would then mean that we fly up during the weekend okay and typically that doesn't usually happen as we know weekend price action often reverses itself very quickly so i think probability wise we see a bit more prolonged sideways price action um probably going into at least early next week and um, at that point I think we might then start to finish this consolidation phase and start to propagate higher. Now of course there is the concern could we be about to really drop to the downside here okay and for me I don't really think we are. I still see this as major consolidation beneath that key 24k resistance so we mentioned in that previous video looking at the high time frame analysis why 24k was significant so right here we've hit tested it here 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 and here 24k hit time and time again but we have not seen a five wave impulse to the downside we've not seen that rejection off of 24k we are still continuing to consolidate and be range bound beneath 24k in my opinion that is a good sign that we will eventually break it to the upside okay however as i say it doesn't look like it's going to happen just yet so i think a bit more patience is required now with regards to these pitchforks um, as i say what i look for is i i draw the pitchfork off of the first three pivots which is based on the first two waves so i had that as the initial impulse up this was your first correction with a flat pattern there so first second third pivot it was an original pitchfork and for me, it's basically telling us that this was a five wave count up to here. The fact that we've come out of this pitchfork now, it basically tells you that the previous price action that was held by the pitchfork has finished. And the way I would count the, the low to the high, it's looking like quite a clean five wave count there with a one, two, three, four, five. So that's the way I'd be looking at it. Um, and yeah, as I say, it looks like we've come down in three waves, gone up in three, and I'm looking for another three wave-ish corrective play out before we eventually push to the upside so that's the significance of this pitchfork i don't think it's that valid anymore you can actually even remove it from the chart now it's not particularly useful um of course we could suddenly shoot back up into it but as i say i don't see that happening before the weekend i think it's possible but i think less probable definitely um so let's just um talk about how far we can expect price to come down so what if you're confirming that's a five wave move up there you basically want to bring on your fib retracement tool uh just from the low to high yeah and you can see we've come down to the point two three six already okay now very often when you get these big parabolic price moves which we i would certainly say we're in a parabolic move to the upside very often you will only retrace to the point two three six and continue higher so there is a chance we get continued consolidation within this block here and continuing to find support off of around 22.4k so remember that number 22.4 very very significant level okay on top of that you've got the level at the 0.382 this is the typical place where you'll get the retracement coming down to uh, as i say in a parabolic move it may only come down to the 0.236 but very often you will get in retracements that 0.382 retracement also so considering the fact that we came down in three and we've actually come up almost as high as the high here i don't think if we if we come down lower i don't think it's going to come down too low i don't think we're going to hit the 50 or the 0.618 i'd be looking at the 0.382 if we do come down below the 0.236 and the 0.382 is at 20 point, 21.4k 
So very easy to remember, 22.4 and 21.4. These are the key levels I'm looking at. For me, if I see some nice corrective price action coming down anywhere near 21.4, I'll be getting very, very interested to look for a long position. Okay, um, so yeah, that's... Um, I'll be yeah that's one of the main things I'll be looking out for now in terms of horizontal levels horizontal support I always like to look at Camarilla pivots so if we just bring on the Camarilla pivots just a moment um, and I want to take a look already you can see going into this week we found support off of the S3 here um, but more important to me is the higher time frame on the daily if we zoom in on the daily it's Really zoom in here um, we are currently above the R4 okay don't forget when you're on the daily each period here is one month okay so what I really want to see if this is going to be a bull market I want to see us finish this month above the R4 now this R4 is at 23.4 so you've got three key levels to look out for now uh, that are very easy to remember we've got 23.4 22.4 and 21.4 these are all the key levels okay for the 23.4 to be significant i want to see us finish the month above that level okay that is the kind of confirmation i would want to see now as i say we could hit that 0.382 retracement which does give confluence with the r3 and that is where i've got a feeling we come down to before going higher yeah so i would not be surprised for us to come down tag the r3 here as well as tagging the 0.382 fib retracement and this all comes in at, as I say, 21.4K. So another reason why I'm really interested in this level around here. Okay, so that was the main thing to look at, uh, looking at uh, the daily Camarilla pivots. I will just bring up the Camarilla pivots on the 15 minute because we had looked at those previously. I think we're probably going to stay quite range bound, held up between the S4 and the R4 each day of with these Camarilla pivots. Um, because we're still very much in this sideways price action at the moment. Now, I think the last time I mentioned them was uh, was on this day here, and I said I wanted to see us finish above the S4 in order to have that bullish kind of um, sentiment from the markets. And I, I announced that around here, and it looked really good at one point. We were coming up, even when we were looking at we might finish above the S3, but then all of a sudden it literally closes the day just beneath the S4. It was a concerning sign. And then what you should often look for if that happens is you should be looking at resistance at either the R3 or the R4 going into the next day. And you can see we fell just short of the R4 and actually came down from there. And now, as I say, we're not really breaking out of the S4 here. We're not suddenly selling off. We're actually finding a bit of support off the S4 here. So as I say, it's all giving me the impression that this is still a very much range bound market. Still doesn't want to go up or down just yet. It's very happy at around these levels. And as I say, I don't see us suddenly shooting up until probably uh, after the weekend. Um, so another thing I will just bring up if we just tidy up the chart, take off the camera pivots. Uh, let's take off this pitchfork and let's clean up this fib retracement also and yeah a couple of other pitchforks that I was looking at so I think this one we can talk about first so basically this was holding price action for the move to the downside okay so one two three waves down okay so looking very very corrective now had that move finished well once it breaks this upper warning line to the upside that confirms that three wave move is completed okay so i'm happy to say that has completed now you can see how it did really respect this pitchfork very very nicely hit the lower warning line range bound between the median line and lower median line for a good while and then um as you can see we're just hovering above the upper warning line now so again this pitchfork no longer valid it just basically confirms that this is a three wave move down complete okay so next pitchfork of significance is the next move up and this pitchfork we are actually still currently within so we've got our first second and third pivots and then we've come up all the way up to here and it's a reasonable pitchfork holding on to price action quite well but i do think that we come down a bit lower and as you can see the lower median line has pretty much held on to the price action here we've never really fallen out of that i would say if we come beneath the low median line again or beneath this low that is confirmation of this uh, upward move being completed so that would be your first wave your second 
and I'll be looking for our final third wave to complete the WXY um, corrective play out. As I say, be looking for a price action running into around the 28th uh, next week before looking for the eventual move to the upside. Now, as I say, I don't want to see price really go significantly below 21.4. Okay, 21.4, as I've mentioned, carries a lot of confluence and I would want to see the bulls step in at that point. If we lose 21.4, I'd be concerned about us going neck down to this ODB level at 19.187k. Okay, so I'm still confident that this goes to the upside. I believe it just needs a little bit more time. Okay, now uh, the next thing I really want to talk about is... Yeah, in terms of what chart really to look at in terms of cryptocurrency for any potential longs, I think you've got to focus on Bitcoin. I've been speaking with the group, the cryptology group, and I've mentioned time and time again how the Bitcoin dominance chart, we've been looking at it for a good while. I'll just bring it up now. Uh, we'll go on to the daily because it's really the high time frame analysis that is significant here. I've been looking for a good while, a strong move, all the way up to around 88 here on Bitcoin dominance. That's where I think price can potentially make it to. But it was these pitchforks I was really focusing on. So I believe this is like a three wave move up to here to make a W, we then get an X wave. And then I'm looking at a three wave move to the upside where that's our first, this is our second, and then we're on to our third. So I actually anticipated Bitcoin surging higher here, which basically means that Bitcoin is gonna have that relative strength against the rest of altcoins. And so if you are gonna be looking for longs, then you want to be in Bitcoin. And whilst if you're looking for shorts, you would want to be in the altcoins, okay? At present, as you know, I've got that bullish outlook with a long-term target to 30K. Um, so yeah, for me, Bitcoin is the chart of interest at this moment in time. So as I say, these pitchforks uh, were just about holding on to price action, uh, the, um, yeah, the price action here. So with the first, second, and third pivots, this shift pitchfork, lower warning line, just about breached, but I would say it did just about hold on to it. If you look on the higher time frames, weekly, monthly, you'll see actually it's only a wick to the downside, um, whilst the body of the candle is very much within the pitchfork still. Um, and then you've got the smaller time frame pitchfork, which you can see holds price action very, very beautifully. So first, second, third pivots, again, shift pitchfork, lovely bounce off of the lower warning line, quick run into the lower median line, and then we've just been surging higher and higher. And you can see we're above the uh, upper median line, wouldn't be surprised for us to go into the upper warning line soon. And in my opinion, we break this pitchfork to the upside. And I've, as I say, I'll be following again this larger pitchfork Probably looking for confluence with the upper, sorry, the lower median line, this blue line here, uh, potentially at around 88. Okay, so I just wanted to bring this chart up just to show you how, with regards to trend, it looks like we're still seeing that relative strength in Bitcoin dominance, which for me tells me that for any longs, I'd be focusing on Bitcoin. Yes, we may see some sudden strong moves in various altcoins but they are lower market cap. They can suddenly retrace very, very quickly as we've seen with Ripple today. And we can just have a very quick look at Ripple. Um, so if we take a look at Ripple, basically, I wanna show you long-term how I've been looking at Ripple. Um, let's just, okay. So all right, what we'll do, we'll look at the shorter term analysis. I did mention we've come down in a three wave move today. I did post a tweet on this, how it looked like an ABC to the downside. However, I don't like, I never like to jump in off the bottom. I like to wait for confirmation and I don't like the way price has reacted here. For me, it looks like it could come down lower. So we've hit an ODB level at 29 cents and we've come down in what looked like uh, an initial strong move down, a corrective flat and then we've come down in another strong move down. But I do not like the reaction here. It isn't, if we go on the 15 minute, it just looks like it wants to keep coming down. This is not what you wanna see. There was a lot of reason for a strong bounce here. We hit a nice ODB, we hit the lower warning line of this corrective pitchfork. Um, again, another pitchfork holding price very nicely. It's the original pitchfork, first, second, and third pivots here we were held by the low sorry upper warning line very nicely and they were absolutely plummeted but the way it's looking i wouldn't be too surprised if we had another strong leg down coming into the lower warning line uh, before long okay so i as i say I, although it's looking like it's running into support i don't like the reaction here on the short time frames 
And on top of that, the Bitcoin dominance chart suggests that it's going higher. So for any longs, I'd be focusing on Bitcoin. I've been saying for a long time on Ripple to the group, the cryptology group, if we just take off this pitch vote just to clean up the chart. I've been saying there's a, a personality to Ripple and you can see it time and time again. So we get these kind of truncated WXYs where you get like a three wave move down to make W. You then get the X wave and you can see how violently it shoots up on the, each leg up. And I meant, I've mentioned this to the group before. In crypto, you get these parabolic moves to the upside and people think they have to be impulsive because they're parabolic. Okay. And then all of a sudden you see price coming back on itself. Okay. So don't always assume parabolic price action equals impulse and well no it can it can be an impulse but it can be an A wave or it can be a C wave as a part of a bigger um, corrective pattern that's the point I'm trying to make so basically yeah the nature of the chart basically you get three waves down three wave uh, three waves up to make the X where you get a very violent move for the X and then what you get is three waves down but the Y doesn't come down below W. You get a truncated WXY. We get exactly the same thing playing out here. Okay, if we zoom in and take a look at what happened here. So you get that first, second, third wave down. We get, then get your three legs up. And look how violent that move was up. Yeah, just a very violent X wave. And then what happens? Big shoot down. Yeah, range bound. Uh, but Y doesn't come down as far as W. Again, truncated, yeah. So that's the kind of play out I'm looking for here as well. And it will probably be making that huge kind of cup like bottom. That's the kind of lookout I'm looking for. And obviously, as we start climbing the right hand side of the cup, it'll be a very attractive option. But for now, I think it has, it looks like it's got room to go a little bit lower, unfortunately. Um, so we've got a first, second, third wave down. And then we've got our three waves up where you can say that's your first, that's your running double three, and that's your third wave up where you get that really strong move up. And yeah, we've come down, you, we, we could find support here. As I say, the lower time frames, I wanted to see support here. As I first looked at it, I was looking out for a potential bounce, a five wave impulse. I posted on Twitter, we've got an ABC coming down, uh, a nice three wave-ish move coming into support off of the ODB. If, we, if you look left from this level, you'll see how significant a level it is. We've got massive resistance here time and time again. All the way over here, it's flipped to support. It's resistance, resistance, resistance. And now we're back here. Very, very key level. And it looks like we might get potentially a dead cap bounce and then come down a little bit lower. But at the moment, I'm not seeing anything to suggest an impulse upwards from here, which is a little bit concerning. And I actually felt that it could come down come back down to potentially around 15 cents it may only come down to here 18 19 cents but as i say i think it's got a little bit of room to the downside however once it gets down to these regions it's looking like a very good uh long opportunity of course it will depend on the future price action but that's something i'll be certainly looking out for um so obviously there is that bad news with regards to ripple when Ripple actually announced themselves that they're expecting a, uh, a lawsuit from the SEC. Um, so that's obviously meant that with Bitcoin dominance looking strong, of all of the altcoins that is going to be weak relative to Bitcoin, Ripple was obviously going to get hit a lot more because of that speculation, because of that fundamental news. Um, so, yeah, one other key thing I want to mention is just with regards to the dollar. Next week, massive, massive, massive bit of data coming in. If I just bring up the dollar. So um, we did see a little bit of a bounce here, but this is the key ODB level that I'm looking at here at 90. Again, nice psychological level. Still not convinced the dollar has made a significant bounce back. It's, I would say it's just about made it to 90. I'd, uh, you know, this is kind of my long-term bias. You know, if it gets above here, fine. It could make a bit of a, uh, a bounce back. Alternatively, I'd say it's still at resistance right now. Um, but yeah, the data coming out next week will be the deadline for the Brexit decisions. Obviously, whether there will be a deal between the UK and Europe. And don't forget, that will hugely impact on the pound. It will hugely impact on the euro, which are basically the not. I mean, the euro is the main 
currency that the dollar basket is paired against so this will have a huge what happens with the euro will have a huge impact on the dollar and i mentioned in the last video the massive inverse relationship between the dollar and bitcoin so obviously as we've come down from march very quickly in the dollar we've basically gone up very quickly in bitcoin so this is why it's significant to look out for what the dollar does i do think it will be quite significantly impacted by the news next week because i think that the euro will shift pretty quick on any decision that is made and um, yeah that could be a catalyst that allows bitcoin to potentially start breaking higher um, so be very aware of that so the deadline is uh, thursday next week so that's something else to be very very aware of um so i think i've pretty much mentioned everything i want to talk about so if we just come back to bitcoin just briefly basically key levels to look at sorry let me just find the chart here we go so let's go on the hourly uh so yeah 23.4 breaking out above 23.4 you know probably after the weekend's price action that is something i'll be looking out for for a potential long because that would be the daily camarilla pivot r4 uh breaking out above that but as i say coming any corrective price action into 21.4 will be very very attractive for me looking for long positions we may just come down to around 22.4 which is the 0.236 retracement from the top here from this significant low down here so i think that pretty much wraps up everything that i wanted to say uh so without further ado i think we can now move on to our raffle which we can find here so i've already put in the url and uh, we've already retrieved our comments so we've got 50 comments to work with here so you've all got a two percent chance of winning so shall we start this now uh, let's start the raffle so there you go alexis roosman roosman excellent name and yeah Thank you very much for the very kind comment very very kind indeed uh yeah so basically as i've mentioned just send over an email the email you can find in the description to every video uh, be mindful of the spelling for that and yeah you've got 48 hours to respond and i will send you your free access link to the juice all right guys i think we are going to wrap it up there i think i've pretty much said everything i wanted to say in this video so if I don't speak to you before Christmas, have a wonderful Christmas and um, yeah, stay healthy, guys. All right. Take care.